Today we're going to take an in-depth look at high feed mills. Now I've got a big piece of 316 stainless that I'm going to be roughing out with a Kinemetal 7792 high feed mill. And you can see we've already started roughing on it and prepped it in our DNM 5700. And on that machine, we used the same tool and we took a heavy depth of cut with a slow feed rate. But now we're over here on the five axis and we're going to use a different strategy so we can increase our material removal rate. Now, most people, when they think of a high feed mill, they think of a roughing tool. But today we're actually going to finish with it to see if we can get a really good surface finish. Now I could have mounted this vise directly to the table, but instead of doing that, I've got it mounted on the Shunk Vero S air chuck system. Now you can mount these vices directly to the table, but when you do that, every time you swap them out, you're gonna to have to re-indicate them in. They also have an incredible amount of holding power and a low profile design so you don't lose a lot of Z-travel. I've been using the Vero S system for years and this is why it's my go-to method for five axis fixture. But with that being said, let's start cutting some chips. Here we go. Come on now, come on now. about them inserts. That's a badass cut right there. Fast, fast, bro. All right, that tool just got finished. Let's get in there and see how much damage we got on the inserts. I knew it. They still look great. The inserts look great. There's no chipping whatsoever. But we were able to run a lot faster without sacrificing any tool life. So I've never tried to run a high feed mill as a finishing tool. So let's run one more pass on this bar and see what kind of surface finish we can get. One day I want to teach Barry how to do this without blowing inserts up. Making this video just for Barry so he can learn something. The great thing about high feed mills is since you're mainly cutting with the bottom of the tool, the cutting forces are mostly axial, meaning the load is pushed directly back up into the spindle where it's the strongest and most stable. This allows the tool to absorb vibration and reduces tool deflection. And for that reason, extended length tool holders are not as much of a problem for high feed mills as they are for end mills that are side milling. High feed mills have exceptional tool life and replacing inserts can be much cheaper than replacing solid carbide. Speaking of people that don't do nothing, Trevor Goforth is here. You've been tearing that around for four days now. I installed this nice seal, and then this fan comes on when you shut the door, and it's like, ooh. <laughs> Only fan I got. <laughs> yeah, we're done filming anyway. Whoo! Man, that looks so nice, I might leave my wife. Oh, don't tell her I said that. Man, this thing feels really smooth, but let's get the profilometer and check what it actually reads. Now, to check this surface finish, we're going to use our Michitoyo SJ210 profilometer. 16.41 RA with a high feed mill. That is amazing. The reason why we're able to get such a good surface finish is because of the design of the 7792 high feed mill. The inserts have an integrated wiper facet on the bottom and the sides of the tool. So as long as your feed per tooth is less than the length of the wiper, you're able to get an amazing surface finish like we got here today. guys thanks for watching i hope you guys learned something today leave me a comment below and let me know if you thought this tool was going to get this good of a surface finish like and subscribe and we'll see y'all next time